counter this kind of a Bible study. As I've been saying, all these are alien to me because it has not been preached. You know, it has not been studied in the church. And so, but I, but then I have been wanting really, you know, to seek the Lord to, to, for me to, to draw closer to him, to have an intimate relationship. Because like what I've said in my heart, I really wanted to draw closer to him. Because it, I, parang, it's not enough that you came to know the Lord, you accepted him as Lord and Savior, but then parang how? How will you grow? Those are questions that I had in mind. And so I joined. I mean, I jo and then I joined Ellen and the teacher of teacher Malu. And so uh, I know slowly deep in my heart that I can reach that point where I can leave Egypt and, you know, be my journey. My journey. I um, have been reading the one you said this morning. And, Ellen and I am really glad and happy that you know deep inside me I have now the desire to read the word of God and like before that you know I just I, I'm contented with reading the Bible now along it's it's not you know it, it's not spoken in my heart so and I attend Sunday school, we attend, you know, church, or the typical uh, church goer. So I praise God that uh, I am taking this journey. Yeah. And nice Amen. to be meeting all of you and to be studying, to be, you know, in one journey together. Thank you, Sister Dell. Yeah. So good morning, everybody. I'll give you my testimony again for the second time, but this time it's a little bit detailed. Um, it was in 1989 when I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I thought I was saved then. I thought my life will be smooth sailing because I thought I knew the Lord. When my husband abandoned us for another woman, I felt my life was shattered to pieces. I prayed, Lord, bakit nangyayari sa buhay ko to? Sino ka ba talaga? Magpakilala ka naman. My fellow Christians prayed for me and told me to read the Bible. I couldn't fully understand then how God's word can solve my problem. As a single mother, I became busy with work. I read the Bible as an obligation only during quiet times, hoping I can get an answer. But I did not find what I was looking for. Oftentimes, I chose verses that speak only of blessing. But there were times when I really wanted to know and understand the scriptures. I felt there was more to it. Alam ko na merong sinasabi ang Diyos sa likod ng words niya, pero hindi ko naman makita. So, I hopped from one Christian church to another. I even attended different Christian conferences hoping to find the answer that will satisfy my hunger, but to no avail. Many years passed until one day, I attended Joyful Achievers Bible Study with a friend. There I saw Mary Lou, and never in my life had I seen a Christian teaching the Word of God with so much joy and enthusiasm. I became interested in her teachings, but because I was busy working, I just resorted listening to her recorded lessons. I enjoyed listening to Marilu's teachings. By God's grace, I understood all her lessons. But during those days, I gave priorities to earning a living than spiritual things. Blessing for me meant material blessings. I easily get upset to annoying people and situation. It was hard to forgive and I complained a lot. Many years passed again. This time I went to the United States. I thought I came to the land flowing with milk and honey. I thought life will be different, hoping to escape from afflictions and begin a new life. But I was wrong. 
more afflictions came my way. My afflictions even doubled. I had no job during that time. My license was on the line. I literally had nothing and no one to depend on. So for me, it was my dead end. Then I remember Marilu's teaching on spiritual journey. I emailed her and she responded right away. And that was the start of our Bible study. This, that time, I became serious in reading the scriptures. I was able to see the relevance of God's word in my life and in what I was going through. As I get to know the word of the Lord, the more I get to know myself, that I am a sinner. So, akala ko mabait ako, ang layo pala ng distance ko kay Lord. That time, I naaninag ko lang yung word. But sometimes, I get frustrated because I cannot see the unveiling of the word the way Marilu sees them. I always tell Teacher Marilu, uh, dapat magpapatianod lang sa kalooban ni Lord. But I did not really understood the meaning of it. My problems were solved by God's grace. But as, as usual, I still relied on my own efforts again. And I still had doubts and fears. I spent my days occupied with two jobs that I couldn't even read the Bible or have Bible study with Marilu majority of the time. I prayed, Lord, maybe if I'm not too busy working, I will have lots of time to read your word. On December 2019, my mother died. So I went home to the Philippines. Then when I traveled back to New York, I lost my part-time job. When I got sick last January, not knowing it was COVID na pala. And while I was sick, I lost my regular job. I exerted so much effort to find another job, but there was none. So I was left with no choice but to stay at home. Marilu continued to minister to me on a daily basis, sharing fresh revelations from God. I listened and read the scriptures by heart every single day. Then... When Marilu taught me about Isaiah 45 verse 7, the one forming light and creating darkness, causing well-being and creating calamity, I am the Lord who does all this. As this verse became unveiled to me, I realized that God allowed COVID and my situation to happen. Knowing it was God's will, I stopped struggling. And for the first time, this is the very first time I totally surrendered everything to him. I read and studied the scriptures every day because it became clear to me that God wanted me to have time to eat his word. He listened to my prayer. He gave me time. During my jobless days, he provided. I was approved uh, sa unemployment insurance, so para na rin akong merong trabaho. Then things started to change as I dug deeper into the word. The scriptures gradually began to speak to, to me. I gradually and progressively see God's unveiling. I understand now that to be saved, one has to see and hear God. Problems and afflictions are God's mercy and love for us. They are in fact God's blessing. I don't easily get upset anymore. I learned the true meaning of forgiving and I stopped complaining. God gave me a job again. So first day I went to work, I received a lot of favors. Everybody was nice to me, in and out of work. That happened every day. Hindi ko alam kung yung paligid ko ang naging maamo o ako ang naging maamo. Possible pala, kahit hindi ako mag-effort, si Lord ang magpapagalaw sa paligid. It was so amazing. I don't doubt and fear anymore because I know that God is with me 24-7. You know, I have been postponing my testimony because I come home from my job very tired because it takes one and a half to two hours travel. But last Sunday when I took a nap and when I woke up, I heard God said, what is love? And then he told me greater love has no more than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. Pinaisip sa akin na I should join him in his death. Ano ba naman ang mapuyat compared to what he did for me on the cross? So I obeyed. That brought death to my flesh again. My heart leaps for joy every time I see and hear God through his word. Yun pala, yun palang land flowing with milk and honey is heaven. 
wala pa lang struggle if I will just live one day at a time and depend everything on Him. And as I see God every day, nakikita ko na ang separation ng light sa darkness, things above and things below. And I thank God for giving me a chance to meditate on the scriptures during the days I was jobless. I also thank Him for our light bearer, Marilu, for being so patient in teaching the fresh revelations from the Lord. Psalm 34 verse 8 says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. All glory to God. Thank you, Sister Thank you for your sharing you. and testimony. And um, Sister Ellen? Or we could probably uh, have another testimony. Ellen, why don't you give your testimony to us? Oh, okay lang naman. Well, I am a single parent then. I got to know Jesus in 1981 when I was in my first year college in UP Los Baños. And uh, because of my involvement in Bible studies in Campus Crusade for Christ, my parents transferred me to a Catholic school <laughs> because they didn't like the idea. I was really persecuted at that time. And even if I was doing good with my grades, Inilipat nila ako sa UST and uh, placed me in a dormitory run by nuns. So every day, I was forced to participate in activities in the dormitory. And they, they have this schedule for uh, novena and I was forced to join. When I uh, went to UST, at the start, meron akong Bible study group. But uh, yung leader ko doon, she had to leave and wala siyang pinag-endorsean sa akin. So for a lot of years, I was a sheep without a shepherd kasi nobody was ministering to me. And then I came to know my husband. Since I was Christian already, merong guilt feeling sa utak ko kasi hindi siya Christian. So ang ginawa ko, doing things on my own, I shared the gospel to him and he received Sabi ko kay Lord, oh Lord, Christian na ha. And uh, we were planning on a, a Christian wedding. But then all the relatives on both our sides were not in favor of it. So we got married in a Catholic church. The center of my life was my husband. I, I uh, took care of him. And uh, I was a graduate of medicine. And since hindi pa ako nagbo-board the exam when I got married, I uh, chose to take care of my family first before I took the birds. And uh, he was very jealous. Ayaw niya ako lumalabas ng bahay. So, sabi niya, hanggat kaya ko, dyan ka sa bahay. And then, so, later on, nung lumalaki na yung dalawang boys namin, he told me that he already needs help. And so, I decided to take my board exam. And uh, nung nagbo-board exam ako, my uncle sponsored my review. So, nag-dorm ako noon para maka-concentrate supposedly. But the thing is, hindi ako nakaaral kasi it was then that I I discovered that my husband was having another woman. So, during the course of the review, wala akong naintindihan. And I was always absent. I was always in the dorm crying hanggang sa umuwi na ako sa bahay ng mami ko, hindi ako makapag-aral. Hanggang sa dumating na yung board exam, uh, I remember that day na mag- magbo-board exam ako, I was supposed to be at the testing center at 8 o'clock. Pero 4 in the morning, nagbabangayan pa kami ng husband ko and his parents, 4 in the morning. And my, my exam was 8. Tapos pupunta ako dun sa dorm, sleep, darating ako ng 6. Gigising ako ng 7. Tatakbo sa testing center. Tumadating ako 10 minutes late. Nakastart na yung exam. And while taking the exam, I can't forget the time na tumutuloy yung luha ko sa test paper. But I kept on answering. Sumasagot lang ako na wala yung utak ko dun sa exam. And then after the exam, I had to to go Look for my husband. Tahanapin ko siya dun sa kainta kasi nandun yung babae. And then makikita ko siya dun. Iuuwi ko siya. Pagkatapos, wala akong gagawin kundi iyak. And then, amazingly, nagmilagro yung Panginoon. My mother would even tell me, kasi she knows that nagpe-pray ako nun. And sinasabi sa akin ng mami ko nun, 
kung pumasa ka sa board, eh, kasi mahal ka talaga ng Diyos mo. Yun ang sab- sabi ng mother ko sa akin. <laughs> And so, um, nagulat ako kasi I passed the exam. I did not pass it with flying colors though. Pero pumasa ako, hindi mo lang ako nakapag-review and I was not practicing even for six years akong natenga after the day of graduation. Six years akong walang review, six years akong walang practice. Halos nakalimutan ko na yung pagiging doktor noon. Tapos nagulat ako talaga kung paano milagro ginawa ni Lord na pinasan niya ako dun sa board exam. But the thing is... Tuluyan na kaming iniwan ng, ng husband ko. He practically abandoned us. And yung apartment ng parents niya na tinitirhan namin, uh, lagi akong pinapalayas ng parents niya. Yung bang sinasabi kanila daw yon. Kahit na ako yung nag-renovate noon with my own money, para ako na pressure na umalis. So I went back home here in Sukat. And I raised my kids dito. Naging tatlo na sila. Nung nanganak ako sa bunso, halos hindi na napinansin ng asawa ko yung, yung anak ko. Two of my children na pinanganak na huli, nang bababain na siya noon. So, hindi man lang siya present during my delivery. I cannot believe mag-isa ako dun sa hospital. Nobody's taking care of me. My, my mom, my dad, wala sila dito. Minsan kasi nasa states ang mom ko. And my siblings were also abroad. So, walang, walang nagbabantay akin sa hospital, eh, CS ako. So, napipilitan akong bumangon the following day with my strap on para lang magpunta ng CR nung inalis na yung mga ano ko, nung ako na lang mag-isa. Ang hirap, no? And uh, the thing is, I knew God, but then I wasn't trusting Him at all. I was doing things my way. Pagkatapos, um, because I was so lonely, I told my friends that I'm single again. And so, may mga dumating na boys sa buhay ko that they come and go. Karoon ako ng mga boyfriends. I was actually looking for love, but I didn't find it. Ang um, pinakahuli kong ano is from the States and uh, he was planning to marry me. But then, kasi I also raised my kids sa Christian churches. So, nag attend sila ng mga Bible school. I was rebuked by my daughter. She told me, Mommy, you cannot marry another guy because you are still married to my dad and my dad is still alive. Unless my dad dies, you cannot marry. Pero mo sinabi ng bata yon, And my my daughter was still early in high school. That's so, para ako nagulat and God made a way para mahiwala yan kung boyfriend kong sa states. So, uh, from then on, I concentrated on my children. Hindi na ako naghanak. Hanggang sa naging uh, preoccupied naman ako so much with work. And I loved my work kasi yun talaga yung forte ko. I, I'm going around different cities in in the country and I would do seminars. It's a networking company and I was the uh, one of the officers that promote the product. So I was so busy with my work that I forgot God. I would uh, remember God only on Sundays and sometimes Sunday may trabaho ako so may Sundays na nami miss ko ang church. But uh, I always bring my children to church hanggang sa there was one day that my daughter joined the worship team at natanggap siya. Sabi ko, anak, baka calling mo na yan. And then when she got baptized, she told me, Mommy, ikaw naman ang tinatawag ni Lord. Mag-active ka na sa church. Eh, hindi ako maka-active na kasi busy ako sa work. You know what God did? God took me out of that work. Natanggal ako dun sa work. It was an illegal dismissal. So, I filed a case against my employer. Tapos nanalo ako sa labor. Pagkatapos, hindi natigil yon kasi ayaw pumayag ng ng employer ko matalo hanggang sa dumating na sa Supreme Court and until now, nasa Supreme Court pa yung case and I remember her lawyers harassing me kasi sinasabi nila na dapat daw hindi pa ako nag-work kasi may case pa ako. So, hindi, hindi ako makakuha ng uh, work na regular. I mean, kaya nahirapan talaga ako. Nasa Lasal pa naman yung anak ko, yung isa, nasa Sandera, puro mahal yung tuition. 
But you know what? I don't know how God did it. But nakatapos sa Lasal yung anak ko, tapos nakatapos sa San Beda yung anak ko isa, yung isa graduate na rin. Yung, isa, yung panganay ko na problema ko, actually my, my eldest, uh, he ran away from home kasi nag-live in with the girlfriend. Ang hirap na gawin to mag-isa and all my siblings were against me kasi during that time, nung nawalan na ako ng work, Uh, pinipressure nila ako pumunta kasi sa States. Pinipressure nila ako na dyan na ako, ako mag-work. Tapos hanggang sa pinaaral nila ako ng nursing, nag-board ako dito, pumasa ako, hindi din ako nag-aaral noon kasi I was working. Pero hindi na ako nag-pursue sa States. I, I was afraid and I couldn't leave my children. And then later on, nung nag-active ako sa sa church namin, sa Victory, nung nawalan na ako ng trabaho, that was the time that I spent time with God. Na, nag-attend ako ng lahat ng equipping na maa-attendan ko. Tapos naging leader ako sa church and masyado kong active, lahat ina-attendan ko. Doon ko ni-spend yung time ko. Tapos kung meron man akong pinagkakakitaan, yun ang ginawa akong sideline, si Lord, yung center na, nag-iba na. But then, alam niyo yun, kahit na na kay Lord ako, marami ako mga bagay na hindi naintindihan. Hindi ko maintindihan ng afflictions. One affliction after another. Tapos even within the church, may affliction ako. So, I kept on seeking God. Tapos nagkaroon na ng COVID. Eh, nung nagka-COVID, nakita ko yung mga post ni Teacher Mary Lou. Kasi naka-attend ako sa kanya once or twice dito sa Philippines when she came here. Thanks to Tita Tess, nakilala ko si Teacher Mary Lou. Sabi ko, ah, ito yung ina-attendan ko dati. So sabi ko, I'll, I'll listen. And uh, natouch ako dun sa mga sa mga unveiling na sinasabi niya. Nag-start siya sa Genesis. I decided to make uh, PowerPoint presentations kasi na, sabi ko, I decided to share it to the victory group that I am with, yung uh, hinahandle ko ng mga girls. Pagkatapos, um, one night, I uh, messaged Teacher Mary Lou to thank her for what she's sharing. And, and I even told her, I hope you won't stop doing this because this is really helping me a lot in my journey, sabi ko sa kanya. Nagulat ako kasi she doesn't know me very well personally. Although we have met several times, she doesn't really know me. I was surprised when she called me right away pagka-message ko sa kanya. And then uh, nagkwentuhan kami. Pagkatapos sabi niya, is it all right? I will include you in the groups that I am uh, teaching. Tapos sinama niya ako dun sa family group niya para makinig ako dun and uh, ako kasi, hindi ako pwede nang makikinig lang. Kaya nire-record ko yung kanyang mga teachings so that I can take notes, you know, go back on the verses, yung hindi ako nagmamadaling nag-notes. And so, nalaman niya nagre-record ako. Sabi niya, pwede bang i-share mo yung nire-record mo? So, I decided to edit the recordings para mawala yung ingay. Actually, hindi ako marunong mag-edit. I just learned as I go. Nag-research ako sa internet, paano ba ito ginagawa? Pagkatapos, tinanong niya ako, di ba sabi mo, you are making uh, slides? Pwede ko bang makita yung slides mo? Noon na, hindi niya ma-open kasi hindi nga take si Teacher Mary Lou. Tapos, um, one time, uh, pinadala ko sa kanya, pinabasa ata niya kay Rio, Uh, pagkatapos, hindi pa masyadong organize yung PowerPoint ko noon Pero somehow nagagamit ko na yon para mag-share Pagkatapos, um, nung uh, nag-attend na ako palagi ng teaching niya During this COVID quarantine Ang dami kong na, natutunan about my journey And now I understand yung mga afflictions ko I understand na bakit nangyayari alam nyo, it's an eye-opener. Kasi akala ko noon, automatic, ah, pupunta na ako sa heaven, i-receive ko na siya eh. I even remember one of my brothers telling me, oh, nag-receive na naman ako, pupunta na ako sa heaven, sabi ng brother ko. Ikaw na lang ang mag-pray. Ako na lang ang magpapasarap. Yun ang sabi niya. Parang na, 
nag-isip ako noon, sabi ko, ano pa talaga yon journey? Do you really go to heaven after one prayer? Nung naintindihan ko yung journey dun sa furniture ng tabernacle, naintindihan ko yung exodus, yung, yung uh, wilderness. Sabi ko, Lord, ngayon ko lang ito naintindihan. Grabe, yung ating good works. Alam natin yan in our head that we are not saved through good works. Sinasabi ko yan lagi yung Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. It's not because of your good works that no one should boast. Sineshare ko yan, pero hindi ko naintindihan. Ngayon ko lang naintindihan yung good works na yun. That it is not your own effort. That you will do good works because, only because, the Trinity is indwelling in you. Yung pala yun. And the Trinity cannot dwell in you if you are still in sin. Eh, tapos lagi kong pinipiloso po noon ang sarili ko. Sabi ko, paano ka hindi magsisina sa earth ka? Ang lagi kong excuse. I'm still on earth so pwede pa ako magsin kasi we, andito pa ako. We. Ngayon ko lang naintindihan na while you are journeying with God, God is building that tabernacle in your heart so that He can dwell in you. And that He cannot build that tabernacle in your heart. Hanggang hindi mo sinusuko lahat ng gold mo, lahat ng silver mo, everything in you dapat pala. Isuko mo yun. I spent my life looking for riches, earning a living, kasi I was only after being comfortable here on earth. Although may idea ako kung ano yung heaven, hindi ko masyadong nilulook forward yung heaven sa buhay ko ngayon because I kept on spending my time in the things that are of this world. Lagi na lang, ano yung future? I never thought about. Ang future pala hindi dito sa earth. It, it should be your future with God. And it is only after these things have been unveiled to me na naintindihan ko kung ano yung future that I'm really lo- looking forward to yung promised land na sinasabi ni God yung pinangako niya sa atin na pinagahandaan niya para sa atin yung pala yun if we do not allow him to build that tabernacle dito sa puso natin hindi natin makikita yung pinangako niya and so I'm really thankful kasi God brought me here and hindi ko nga ina-expect na Isa ako sa mag-share kasi yung journey ko dito sa Joyful, I only started dito COVID eh. And uh, it is just a, an honor for me to be of use sa kingdom ni God by sharing these slides with you. Actually, it's it's the work of the Holy Spirit. It's the work of the Trinity. When I do those slides, dun na-unveil sa akin ni God yung meaning ng, ng mga salita sa Bible. If Teacher Mary Lou receives her unveiling by reading the word, ako, I, I receive my un- unveiling as I do those, those videos, those slides. I allow the Holy Spirit to organize yung uh, mga teachings ni Teacher Mary Lou and make it simple so that anyone who listens to it will understand. Kaya yun nabubuo. It's the work of God. And uh, God actually prepared me for for that because wala akong ginawa kung hindi magpagawa ng PowerPoint for presentations for the different companies na sineserve ko to promote their product. I did not know that God would use it for His kingdom. I am encouraged to continue doing it because of the kind words that you are sending me. And uh, I'm really happy that a lot of you are being blessed by these videos. Last night, I was having uh, excruciating uh, pain in my abdomen and uh, my back. Pakiramdam ko something's wrong with my kidney. Baka may bato. I don't know. Kasi I kept on urinating. I was up all night and in pain. I was crying because of the pain. Pero the good thing is I understand what I'm going through and I'm not anymore complaining to God. And wala na rin yung fear of what will happen to me kung, kung malalayan o hindi. Hindi na rin ako natataak. So, praise God. <laughs> praise God na may naintindihan natin yung afflictions natin. And if that's God's way of uh, slaying our flesh so that we can see Him forever and ever. Wala yang sa affliction 
Nanasa Lake of Fire, which is in hell because that one is everlasting as well. So I just thank God for choosing me and for judging me while I'm here on earth so that I can see him and I can be with him in the future forever and ever. Dati nagbabasa ako ng Bible, hindi ko maintindihan. I have to ask help from commentaries. Marami akong hindi naintindihan, pero ngayon God is really speaking to me when I read the word. Para kang nasa ibang realm when you open the Bible. Kasi iba na, iba na, na yung Bible binabasa mo na naiintindihan mo because God is really speaking to you. But I, and I also thank uh, Teacher Mary Lou for really encouraging me na magbasa, na magsik talaga kay Lord. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Ellen. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Thank you so much for patiently waiting. I know kay Lord walang accident. So, sa totoo lang, punong-punong-puno yung puso ko. I don't know where to start. Like I said, um, I wanted to cancel today because of our vacation nga. Maybe I should have kasi gaya ngayon, ang gulo-gulo. Um, you know, my things are still downstairs. Wala akong mga, mga equipments ko. Wala yung notes ko. But anyway, God is good. So I'm just going to, I'll just, let's just pray that the Holy Spirit will lead me as I share. But just from what I heard, um, Ellen, I think even just through that testimony, we can already see clearly how God led her from, from Egypt to the promised land. And that is no shortcut. We have to go through the wilderness. Although, you will see that even if lahat na ng afflictions, trials, and uh, difficulties dadaanan natin, kung wala tayong light bearer to point us to Jesus, to see the way sa word, hanggang hindi mabuksan yung scriptures for us to see, ah, kaya pala dinadaan ako ni Lord sa afflictions na yun dahil gusto lang niyang baguhin yung aking puso dahil Kung hindi madedesolate at mawawasak yung old heart, hindi mabubuksan talaga yung ating spiritual eyes. There is no way we can see God and hear Him apart from the old flesh dying. Because we came from the seed of Adam, we have to go through that death of that old seed to be able to be risen a new creation with a new seed a new intellect will and emotions that can now grasp scriptures so that when we read the bible buhay yung ating binabasa nakikita natin naririnig natin as in personal na nangungusap si Lord sa atin okay so let's just open in prayer so that the lord will guide us as we as i am um, skim through the scriptures with you and I promise I'm not going to take too long because I know na you get overwhelmed when the lesson gets too long so I'll just um, cut it whenever the time is up so let's just bow down our heads in prayer Father today we humble ourselves at your feet O oh God desiring nothing but to be brought to light to be able to comprehend what it is to be able to see your kingdom, to be able to see you, Lord Jesus, to be able to um, hear you and appreciate you, the work you've been doing in our hearts, dear Holy Spirit, in leading us to the truth so that it is only through your work of separating darkness and light, separating the waters above and the waters below, by using the sword of the Spirit to pierce our soul and our heart to divide the flesh and the Spirit, that we may behold the beauty of your, of your dwelling place, the place where you are inviting all of us to live with you forever and ever. So, Father, today, send us this same Holy Spirit to anoint each and every head that's bowed down here this evening. Father, I know that on my own, I have nothing to share. So Father, I only depend on your anointing and your Holy Spirit, Lord, 
Use my mouth as your mouthpiece. Use me, Lord, as a channel of your blessing, that all the ears that will be opened today through your spirit, Lord God, may be hearing your voice and not mine. Close my, my, my uh, human intellect, my human mind, my human heart, and just let your love and your light flow through me today to my brethren, that they too may be brought to life, that they too may understand and may be able to experience the unfathomable joy of truly living in your presence, O Lord. And then they can say that, Lord, just your presence is enough. We are ready to lay down our lives as a living sacrifice just to be able to behold the beauty of your presence. As David would say, Lord, that I may dwell in your presence and never leave this place ever, ever again. Allow us now, Lord God, to um, experience the sweetness of your embrace, the warmth of your love, and the peace of being able to stay in your presence. Your loving kindness and your mercies are new every morning. So, Father God, please, Lord, open their spiritual eyes and ears that they may truly hear you and see you tonight and this morning in the Philippines, Lord God. May we all be ready for the time when you sound the trumpet for us to hear your call because our spiritual ears are open. And Lord, we thank you for we know that you are going to, the work that you started in their lives, you are going to complete to the finish. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, like for three weeks now, after I have um, given that uh, two, two and a half hours lesson on the overview of um, the unveiling of the 777s, I got messages from you that um, truly, um, I gave you a systems overload. <laughs> so uh, I said, Lord, I'm going to go through the tabernacle, tabernacle furniture, one piece at a time. And today, I was just planning to teach on nothing but the brazen altar. So for um, two to three weeks now, I have been writing the notes on the, on the brazen altar that the Lord would want me to share with you. Para nga, <laughs> nandiyan na sa ears ko always, what Sister Bambi say, bring us to the faith walk, you know, from Egypt to that brazen altar that we could not yet imagine right now. So, like I said, I have filled three band papers back and forth just just on scriptures on the brazen altar. But I think it's been two or three nights now that the Lord just kept me awake all night. And he diverted the message, you know, just from um, focusing on the brazen altar. He says, why don't you start from the very beginning? You know, like from the moment that we are in Egypt, accepting the Lord as our personal Lord and Savior. I know you want to start from that. So, um, we are going to see clearly how from um, Egypt or the earth, when we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, how he will walk us through so that we are going to be able to go to that promised land and that first furniture in God's tabernacle. And so the verse that God truly um, impressed on me was John chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. I gave you those assignments. You know, like, I'm sure we all came from the same background, you know, in church, like, especially for me, I've been through, um, I think I went to uh, um, the school of ministry for three years. And of course, all of us learned, that, you know, you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that's how to be born again. And then, ang sabi pa nga sa atin, oh, basta taos puso mong tatanggapin si Lord, you know, pag tinanggap mo, 
bukas pag namatay ka, you'll already go to heaven. But you know, the more I studied scriptures, the more I studied scriptures, little by little, the Lord unveiled to me that, you know, parang kulang. At saka, to begin with, well, I was in that stage for um, how many years? 20 years because I accepted the Lord in 1971. But I was truly born again only in the year 2000 after I had my cancer. And through my journey, when I went through my deepest affliction and I knelt before the Lord and opened my Bible, that is the only time that God opened scriptures. Meaning, dun ko lang naintindihan yung mga, dating binabasa ko lang na literal, now I'm going to share with you, you know, like, well, John chapter 3, lahat tayo memoryado natin yan. God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, so that He, whoever believes on Him, shall not perish but have everlasting life. Alam mo, pati lang yung verse na yun, yung palang word na believe, hindi lang basta you believe, accept Jesus, and then you're born again. Why? Because when I first believed, no, I thought I already believed sincerely in my heart, hindi pa pala yun yung meaning ng believing when your spiritual eyes and ears are already open. Meaning, I cannot believe in somebody. How can I believe in Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit that I have not seen, I have not heard, and I have not known? Yes, I already embarked on reading the scriptures. Six years old pa lang ako, sabi ko, binabasa ko na itong Bible na ito, sampunay na bugbog ko, pero wala pa talagang nabubuksan until after the Lord, one, you know, piece by piece. Actually, I think it started with Exodus 12, verses 1 to 3, when God said to Abraham, Abraham, I want to bless you, but you have to leave your country, your people, and your father's household. I didn't even know what all those three meant, you know. Now I know that's the... Those are the three ingredients of the covenant. But it's as if God himself started to talk to me and say, you know, Mary Lou, I want to bless you too. But you have to leave your country, your people, and your father's household. And as I was going through my trials, I saw myself following this very pattern, you know. One trial after another. I, I, I'm not going to go through the details anymore, but... You know, I lost everything. I went through sickness. In other words, I went. He, in other words, itong puso ko, the dating nito sa earth, ililipat pala niyan lugar. Eh, hindi niya po pwede ililipat ng lugar kung hindi mo muna bibitawan lahat ng hawak-hawak mo. Although, God will deal with us differently depending on the idols of our hearts. So, what my I, what I went through is not what you are going to get through because you have different idols than I have. But I guess, <laughs> ako yung matigas na shell. Kaya nga, that's why I had to go through mountains of trials and difficulties. Okay? So, but let me go back to, um, uh, but it is those very difficulties that God showed me what, he, what he revealed to Abraham when he asked Abraham to leave everything. In short, yung tatlong yun, he had to leave everything because he was, um, um, he must have been a millionaire in the land of Ur when God told him, you know, Abraham, leave everything. So at the end, he only lived in tents. And then in Hebrews chapter 11, it says, he was able to do that because he saw the city whose architect and builder is God. What did God, what did Abraham see? Abraham saw the kingdom of God. And that is what we are going to learn. What is this kingdom? But before I go to Genesis, I, uh, John 1 verse 12, let's go to, um, alam ko lahat tayo, memoriado natin ito. John chapter 3, verse 3. All of us have memorized this, I know, where it says, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay? John 3.3 3, Unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So, what is this kingdom of God? Can anybody tell me what this kingdom of God is? Just unmute your mic. Tell me what the kingdom of God is and then you can mute again. 
What is this kingdom of God? Uh, what is the what is the what is God's kingdom? Something that Anybody I've can learned you from uh, something that I keep hearing is that righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. That's what I kept hearing before. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just out of my mind. Okay. Uh, for me, for me, the, okay. For me, the kingdom of God is, as I am known okay. through the word, it is His rule and sovereignty over your life. It is the, the victory, the power that He had done on the cross, so that you can mm -hmm. live your life victoriously. That's the kingdom of God that is set in my heart. Okay, thank you for all those um, insights. One more. Can I hear um, another definition of the kingdom of God for an, from, from another one who wants to share? And then we are going to go to scriptures and see what the kingdom of God is. For me, what I understand is uh, it's the place of God and it is heaven. Mm-hmm. That's what I understand. Very, God. <laughs> very good. So where is heaven? It says, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And that's for present, okay? That's what I was Have you been seen? asking Have you for. Seen? Not yet. <laughs> I, I said, I, I don't know where heaven is, but I know it's the oh. place of God. You know. Okay, okay. I thank you so much for your honesty, okay? So if you haven't seen heaven... It says here, then, can you already say you are born again? It says here very clearly, unless, unless you are born again, unless, okay, who is this? Moses, should I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. This does not mean that you are going to see the kingdom of God when you die. That's too late. This means you are going to see the kingdom of God today. Okay, so let us define our, 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 our um, verses. Let, apart from that, I'll just, I will explain all of that all at the same time. Let's go back to um, John chapter 1, verse 12. Let's read that, and then we will explain what, what the kingdom of God is. John chapter 1, verse 12. Yeah. Okay, sabi niya. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become to the become children. the children of God to those who believe in his okay. name yeah. who are born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of God. When you read that, most every time that anybody would tell you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you will now be born again, this is the verse they use. Am I right, Pastor Ted? This correct, is the correct. verse you use. Uh, to correct. Okay, this is what you use. But do you think we can understand, or even now, do you think you can understand these two verses? What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the, the, each word that's important and explain it to you. But before we can understand that, let us first know the answer to what is the kingdom of God. For us to know the kingdom of God, we have to start from the very beginning. And where is that? Kaya I cannot emphasize enough the importance of knowing Genesis 1. Okay? Because in Genesis 1, that is where God laid the pattern for our salvation. Okay? So let's go back now to Genesis 1. I know um, Ellen gave a very good teaching on Genesis 1. I recommend all of us would read it. But I just want to take out some important verses there and um, make everything clear so we know, we know what we are talking about when we talk about the kingdom of God. Okay, let's go to Genesis and then I will explain John chapter 1, verse 12, word for word. Genesis chapter 1. Okay. Verse 3. Let's start with verse 3. You, uh, you just read verse 1 and 2 for your, you know, by yourselves. And I'm just going to go focus on the first day that God created. 
When, and then God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Okay, what is it? What is the emphasis here on the first day that God created? The first thing God created was the light. I know from Ellen's recording, she already shared with you that this light is Jesus. Why? Because when we go back to Genesis, I, to John chapter 1, see, in studying scriptures, we cannot study it by just reading one part. The way to study scripture is by using chain reference. Make scripture interpret scripture. That's the only way we can get unveiling. Okay? So to get the unveiling of what this light is, we need John chapter 1, the whole of John chapter 1. We will go there, but before that, let me just show you one important thing that God did on the first day. He separated light from darkness. What does that mean? From the very first day that God created the physical universe of man, he already separated light from darkness because there are only two kingdoms. The kingdom of light, which is the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of darkness, which is the kingdom of Satan. That's the first day. Okay? So, ngayon we're getting a better insight when somebody asks you, what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is where the light is. Because if there is no light, we will not be able to see God. See, God lives in the third heavens. We know that there are three heavens because of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2 or 3. Or is that the 1 Corinthians chapter 12 where Paul was mentioning the three heavens, the third heavens. And then here in Genesis, when, we, when you say, when you go to the first verse, when it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I have to you know, repeat, keep repeating this so it will be made clear to us that heavens meaning plural and if we know that there are three, God lives in the third. So the first day syempre in order ni God gagawin. So the first day he will make the second heaven, the second day he will make the first heaven and then the third day he will make the earth. Okay? So the first day he separated darkness and light. So where is the kingdom of God for right now? In Genesis. It's only in the second heaven, correct? Ando doon pa lang ang kingdom of God as this time. Kasi everything else below the second heaven is all darkness. Sabi niya, God divided the light from darkness. God called the light day. So, nasaan lang yung day? Makikita mo, God called the light day. It's a capital letter D. When we go to, um, to uh, uh, let me just quote this now. We will go to that later. John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. So even in Genesis 1, I am um, John chapter 1, uh, Jesus it, it says that in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. It will go on and say, you will understand that that light is Jesus. He is the word who was present in creation because the Trinity would be present in creation where it was God the Father speaking, Jesus is the word, and the Holy Spirit was executing everything. Before, when you first read just Genesis on your own, you never saw that that was the work of the Trinity. You know, you read, you read Genesis 1, it's just history. But now that we are learning to know more about God, learning to know more about the three Trinity, we know that the Trinity never separate. They're always working in tandem. They're always working together. So we know now that where there is light, it's a capital letter D, there is day. And everything that is in darkness is called night, capital letter N, because the ruler of darkness is Satan. And so then in verse 6, it says, 
Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. So in the next verse, when God would create, the, what, what God would create on the second day was that he will divide the waters above and the waters below. And what is in the middle of that is the firmament. That is called the first heaven. Sabi niya, God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament and it was called. God oh. called the firmament heaven. So the evening and the morning were the second day. What I would want for us to see here is that firmament was dry ground. Okay? It was dry ground because God separated the waters above and the waters below. The firmament is that dry ground. What is in the waters below? In the waters below is where God would create the earth. Kailangan maintindihan nating mabuti. Itong earth na ito is created from the waters below. Temporarily lang si Lord, pinaghiwalay niya yung waters below, itinabi niya yung dry land which is earth, and yung tubig tinawag niyang sea. Okay? So it's clear. So, darkness in the firmament, which is the first heaven, kasi hindi pa naman niya sinabing it is light. And darkness pa rin sa earth. Okay? So, nasaan ang kingdom ni God? Nandito lang sa second heaven. So, from there, naintindihan mo na, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Just from Exodus 1, you can tell where is the kingdom of God. It's in the second heaven kasi nandiyan pa lang yung light. Do you understand? So, everything under the second heaven is all darkness. Now, let's go back to, basta siya very, very clear sa mind natin, okay? First day, si Lord, nandi dyan sa second heaven. Nandu, si Lord bumaba sa first You have to understand, if God lives in the third heaven, there is no way possible that we can go to the third heaven. Like, Del was uh, very um, honest in saying, I don't know where heaven is and I don't know how to get there. That's very good, Del, because if you say, oh, I know where it is, then you don't need the light. You don't need Jesus. You don't need the word to bring you there because you already see it. You see? You will not need Jesus anymore. You don't need the word to be unveiled for you to see where is this kingdom of God. But dito, binalikan natin from Genesis 1, makikita mo, ah, nandun doon pala yung kingdom of God kasi nandun doon lang yung ilaw. Nand okay, first, we have to differentiate what is this light that God created on the second day from the light that He created on the fourth day. Because on the fourth day, God would create the light bearers, the sun, the moon, and the stars. I just want for us to understand clearly Iba yung physical lights, the sun, the moon, and the stars that God created on the fourth day. Iba ang spiritual light na kinreate ni God on the first day. Okay? So now let's go back to John 1. Let me start uh, reading from the very beginning so that we are going to see that if we just read John 1 verse 12 with our human Intellect, because man is composed of body, soul, and spirit, and the heart of man or the soul is still human. It's a human mind, human intellect, human will. There is no way, just, you know, like if I still have that human intellect in me, and I read John 1, verse 12, hindi, hindi, ko, pa pala, hindi ko pa pala yun naintindihan according to the way God wants me to understand it. Okay? Because God speaks to us in parables. So the whole of the Bible is secret to those who only have a spiritual mind. He's only going to open scriptures to those who are in the kingdom of God who already have the light. <laughs> okay? So, sabi dito, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. So, who is this? Jesus. He was in the beginning with God. So, Jesus was the Word. He was with the beginning in creation. And then all things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. So, in other words, here we have an understanding that everything is created 
only because of God's word. So kung lahat ng physical was created by God's word, we know that sa spiritual, it's a seven, seven last words, it's still words that created the spiritual man. So for us today, what is going to create the kingdom of God in your heart? It's only the word. So apart from us really eating God's word, hindi ma-establish yung kingdom niya dito. But it has to be the living word. Okay? Let's continue. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. What is this telling us? Kung wala yung light na yun na kinreate ni God dun sa second day, ay sa first day, you are dead. Okay? You are in darkness. The, earth, the whole of the earth, wala pang light. Even up to now, there's still no light. So this whole earth is in darkness. Kaya nga sabi niya, the light, who is that? Jesus, okay? The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend. So, the very first time Jesus came to the earth, yung aling sinasabi dito sa verse 5, si Jesus pumunta sa darkness, aling darkness yan? Earth. Hindi lang earth. Pumunta siya dito sa puso mo. Darkness pa. So, akala mo makikita natin si Jesus? Hindi. Why? Because we are still in darkness. Kaya nga makikita mo, what does he have, what, does, what will God have to do? Verse 6, sabi niya, So there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness to the light that all through him might believe. Dito pa lang makikita mo, you see yung belief? Hindi ko pala pwedeng mag-believe kung walang light bearer o kung walang witness na nakakita na ng ilaw, ito yung light bearers. Yung nakita, nakakita na ng ilaw na sinend ni God sa iyo para ituro yung ilaw, doon ka pala ngayon maniniwala kay Lord. Pag tinuro niya yung ilaw, pero ikaw, kailangan pa rin bumalik sa word para mabuksan yung word sa yung personal. Okay? You, are you able to follow me so far? Sabi niya, John was not the light, capital letter L, but was sent to bear witness to that light. So sino lang ang makakadala sa atin sa light? Kailangan yung pinadala ni Lord na magtuturo sa atin sa light. So yun nga yung sinasabi ni Ellen na dumaan na siya ng afflictions. Nagbabasa naman siya ng Bible. Pero hindi pa niya nakita yung light hanggang hindi ginamit ni Lord ang isang light bearer to point her to the true light who is Jesus. Okay? So now we understand why. Then verse 9 sabi niya, that was the true light which gives light to every man who was coming into the world. Jesus was in the world. The world was made through him, but the world did not know him. So in other words, if you are still in the world here on earth that's still in darkness and you read, oh, tanggapin mo na lang si Lord. Sabi dito sa verse 12, you, to those who receive him, he gave their light to become the children of God. Sabi mo na, oh, tinanggap ko naman si Lord eh. The problem is we do not go to verse 13. We just quote verse 12. Sasabihin mo lang na, oh, tinanggap ko na si Lord, then born again na ako. Eh, kasi sinabi dito, to them as many as received Him, He gave the right to become the children of God. To those who believe in His name, and I really believe in His name. So I'm already born again. That's what we have been claiming all this time. But because we are in darkness, hindi natin ito maintindihan. So what is the first thing that should open our eyes? The first thing I have to do is to acknowledge to the Lord. Lord, I am in darkness. I belong. So if you're in darkness, to whom do you belong? I belong to the kingdom of Satan. Whether you want to admit it or not, masakit man or hindi, I belong to the kingdom of Satan. So the first thing that we have to do Lord, I need you to open my eyes that I may see the light. Lord, I am blind. I am dead. I am born dead. You know, my spirit cannot communicate with you. We keep praying and praying and praying. But what do we pray for? We pray for the solution of our problem. When God brings us the problems, He is talking to us. That's why in Hebrews 4, as verse 12 or something says, when you hear God's voice, 
Do not harden your heart. So do you know that when you're going through affliction, God is trying to talk to you? He wants to unveil the word to you. But because you do not have a light bearer to show you na, oh, ito pala yung way. Ang way lang from Egypt to the promised land is via the wilderness. There's no other way. God showed it in the book of Exodus. How can you go? When we go to the details of Exodus, I'll go through that with you. Makikita mo na God could have sabi niya, they could have gone through the shortcut, but God did not bring them to the shortcut. He had to bring them through the wilderness. Why? Because He had to prepare their hearts. Our hearts belong to the kingdom of darkness. It belongs to the kingdom of Satan. And until we discover all these years that we are trying to be righteous, that's why you listen to um, Ellen's faith on the righteousness of God, it is so clearly seen. Iba yung righteousness ni God, iba yung self-righteousness that we get from. See, I could have, when I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I tried to be good on my own. I tried to obey the law. I tried to abide by what I read in the word. I tried to apply. Okay, Lord, pala, those are all filthy rags. That was not enough. Even if I obeyed the law 100%, I'll still go to hell. Why? Because I still belong to the kingdom of darkness. I still belong to the kingdom of Satan. Yes, I was already doing all the righteousness that the Bible requires, but Sabi ni God, that's not enough righteousness. So let's go now to John chapter 8. Where for the very first time, Jesus would say, I am the light of the world. John chapter 8. This is Jesus is speaking already, okay? Sabi niya. Well, verse 12, sabi niya. And then Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have light of life. Very clear. Jesus is saying here, siya lang ang ilaw. Hindi yung sun, moon, and stars that God, the physical sun, moon, and stars that God created on the fourth day. It is so different from this light that Jesus was talking about. Sila sabi ni Lord, ako lang yung ilaw. But you see, itong ilaw na ito na iniintroduce ni Jesus, it cannot belong to the world because the world is in darkness. This whole world, this whole, what we call Egypt in the Old Testament, pati yun, symbolic. It is, all of this world belongs to Satan. My heart belongs to Satan. So how is God going to transfer me now from darkness to light? Again, his word. So let's continue reading. Sabi niya, the Pharisees therefore said to him, you bear witness of yourself. Your witness is not true. But Jesus answered and said to them, even if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true, for I know where I came from and, and where I am going. But you do not know where I came from and where I am going. Alam ba natin where Jesus came from? Hindi pa naman natin, hindi nga natin naintindihan pa yung Genesis 1 na Jesus came from heaven. He went to the second heaven to be the first star. Spiritual star. And then he went to the first heaven to replace Adam as the moon, spiritual moon, because Adam sinned, he was now cursed and he was brought down to earth. That is where we all came from. So we don't know where we are going. We know where we're going to heaven, but how can you go to heaven? You don't even know the first heaven. You don't know the second heaven. How can you go to the third heaven? You cannot skip the first heaven because the first heaven is the, where the heart is going to be prepared so that God could now sow that word who is light in our hearts. Ang preparation yung first heaven. But we are going to go there slowly. Sabi niya. You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. And yet, if I do judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I am with the Father who sent me. See, even Jesus, when he came, he was sent as a star and a messenger. and It was the Father who sent him. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am the one who bears witness of myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness of me. And then they said to him, Where is your Father? Jesus answered, you know neither me nor my father. Because if you had known him, you would have you known, known my father. father. If you had known me, you would have uh, known my father my also. Father. 
These words Jesus spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no one laid hands on him. For his hour, meaning his death, had not yet come. Even the death of Jesus, it God already had it, you know, planned when he was going to die. But now we are going to go to the more important verses. Then Jesus said to them, I am going away and you will seek me and you will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. Jesus was already talking about his death. If Jesus did not die, we would have died in our sins and have deserved nothing but the lake of fire, eternal lake of fire. Sabi niya, where I go, you cannot come. Before Jesus died, there's no way we can go to heaven. Jesus had to die first. Okay, why? Because God is love. He is just. He has to pay for the penalty of Adam's sin, your sin, and my sin, so that we will be free now to go to the first heaven. Jesus took our judgment for us on the cross. Let's just continue. All of this will become clear. So the Jews said to him, will he kill himself? Because he says, where I go, you cannot come. He said to them, you are from beneath, meaning we are from the earth. I am from above. That means he is from heaven. You are of this world. I am not of the world. Therefore, I say to you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Meaning, do you think they could believe in Jesus at this point? No. Because even if it was already Jesus speaking to them, they still could not believe him. Why? Because they still do not have the spirit to see Jesus. We can only see Jesus when the human spirit dies, when the human soul dies, to release the spiritual eyes and ears to see Jesus. We have to understand that. And so then they said to him, who are you? And Jesus said to him, just what I have been saying to you from the beginning. I have many things to say to you, to judge concerning you. But he who sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I heard from him. But what? They did not understand that he spoke to them of the Father. Jesus was speaking clearly. He's speaking to you clearly. And me clearly, but do we not know? Because until you have come to the light, meaning until you have come to the death of the flesh, you will not understand what Jesus here was saying. So, and then Jesus said to him, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father taught me, I speak these things. What does it mean when you lift up the Son of Man? It means when you have crucified Jesus. When you have crucified Jesus on his resurrection and then he sends us his spirit, that's the only time that we can see him and then we can believe. Sabi niya, and he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone for I always do those things that please him. And he spoke these words and because he spoke these words, many believed in him. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What does uh, verse 32 mean? Memoriado nating lahat ito. You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Who is the truth? Alam natin yung I am the way. Jesus is the way, which is the crucifixion. I am the truth, because they are the Trinity. Those are the Trinity working together. Sino yung truth? Yung Holy Spirit yung truth. It is the Holy Spirit who is going to divide, pierce my heart so that the spirit and the flesh will be separated so that now it will make me free. Make me free to do what? Make me free to follow the Lord. Until you discover the truth of God's word, meaning Hanggang hindi mabuksan itong Bible na to na maintindihan natin, makita natin yung Trinity, we will not be free to follow God. We are free to follow the law and obey the law, but that is not going to make us <laughs> go to heaven by just following the law. We are going to find that out later. 
Do you understand what I mean? Kailangan itong spirit of truth will pierce and desolate my heart through affliction so that I will be free to follow the Lord. Why? Because once my heart is made desolate, God can now start to sow that spiritual seed from heaven in my heart. Let's continue reading. Ito sabi niya. And when you are free, you'll be free indeed. Ito na yung most important. Sabi niya, I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. How do we kill Jesus when he tries to speak to us like in Hebrews 4, when he tries to speak to us through his voice, meaning when affliction comes, we harden our hearts. What are we doing? We are killing the word. Because when we go through affliction, when you know the word, you know that it is God speaking, you surrender to him and say, Lord, thank you. I know you are piercing my heart, preparing it to be made good ground for you to sow the seed of the kingdom. That is going to be the start of the transformation of my heart. When we see that, see, hindi mo ito maiintindihan. Paano, kung, paano ka namin pinapatay? Because my word is not in you. In, kailangan, ikukonnect mo ito ngayon sa Hebrews 4 na sinabi niya, when you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. When do we harden our hearts? When we have affliction and we pray for the solution of the problem. That means we harden our hearts. We refuse to have our hearts demolished. We refuse to have our heart slain or to be made desolate. Ayaw natin pasira yung puso. Ayaw natin patibag yung puso. Gusto mo ikaw pa rin ang in control ng heart. So sabi niya, and then they answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from, God's, from God. Abraham did not do this. Okay, you already know it. When Jesus says, you seek to kill me, ano yun? Yung word niya, pag hindi tinatanggap ng puso, hindi mo naintindihan, matigas yung puso, hindi nakapasok yung word ni Lord, kinabubuksan, hindi natin ngayon nakikita si Lord. Because when we see Him, what will happen? They will inhabit our hearts when we see the journey now that He is going to um, teach us. Sabi niya, uh, you do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, We were not born of fornication. We have one father, and that's God. But Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Okay, ito na yung very important. Why do you not understand my speech? In other words, why do you not understand his words? Why do, not, why do I not understand the scriptures? The way God wants me to understand it. Because you, are not, you, because you are not able to listen to my word. Who is speaking? Jesus is speaking. You, because you are of your father, the devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. What are the desires we want to fulfill? We want to fulfill the desires of the flesh. We do not want to go through affliction because it's contrary to the flesh. Okay? So, like, this is what he's saying. Do you know, until I read this, I said, Lord, all the while I was obeying you, obeying your commandments, and Satan is my father? You know, until God opened this thing to me. And I said, Lord, I'm helpless in this situation. And so he said, he... He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. See, it's the opposite of the truth. The Holy Spirit is the one that pierces the heart. And then it says, when he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin and I tell you the truth? Why do you not believe me? He who is of God, hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. You know, until, until we admit, Lord, I am blind. I did not know that if I'm blind, I'm, I'm still spiritually dead. I am of my father, the devil, you know. So I need you. And then here again where he says, why do you sin? Uh, very clear in verse 34, sabi niya, 
verse 34, sabi niya, this is answered them, more, more, most assuredly I say unto you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever. Ano yung house? The house is God's tabernacle. The kingdom of God is God's tabernacle. Yung pinag-aaralan natin ng first heaven, second heaven, third heaven. That's God's house. That's God's tabernacle. That's the kingdom of God. That's what we have been trying to learn from the very beginning. So now when I ask you, what's the kingdom of God? Where is the kingdom of God? It is in God's tabernacle, the first heaven, the second heaven, the third heaven. That's where God is bringing us. If we go across from the earth through the wilderness to his tabernacle. And when he says here, why do you commit sin? You are a slave of sin, meaning you are a slave of Satan. What is this picture showing us? When the Israelites were in Egypt, they were under bondage to Pharaoh. Hi. They were under bondage to Egypt. They were under bondage to sin. See, it would be a long time before Pharaoh would even let them go. Satan is not going to easily let you go. It's going to be a struggle, the same way we see in Egypt. God had to bring them to th through 10 plagues before they left Egypt. But you see, the Israelites, because God, do you know that from the very beginning, before you were even born, God already knew you were going to be his own? God already knew. That's why you are here to listen to his word. Para itong word niyang ito mabuksan sa atin. Now, all the while we thought, we knew the Bible, we were born again. But now I'm just asking you the simple question. Do you know where the kingdom of God is? Bell gave the closest answer. She says, yeah, it's in heaven. But <laughs> where is God's tabernacle? You don't even know the details of his, his tabernacle. So how can we say we are born again? Very clear from what we read. Where, is, where can we be born again? Only in the second heaven. Okay? The first heaven is the preparation. We are going to get there on our next lessons. I'm going to have an extensive description of what the brazen altar is all about so that we are going to be clear after we come from the brazen altar, we go to the second heaven where you can say, now I am truly born again. Okay? So um, I have passed my time. <laughs> I have not even scratched the surface. But at least today, you get an understanding. First, you have to admit, Lord, I am still in darkness. I belong to the kingdom of the world. Bring me to the kingdom of light, O oh God. And it is only your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, who can set me free so that I can now follow you to the tabernacle where you want me to live with you forever and ever. Okay? So um, let me end with that. There's so much more I want to share with you, but just think about those verses first. Go back to Genesis 1. Study Genesis 1 to 14. You listen to the signs that um, Ellen shared. She's going to be sharing on the seasons soon after she finishes um the video then um on the next meeting hopefully we can um uh, move further okay john chapter 1 verse 12 what i'm going to define in verse 12 dito sabi niya but as many as receive him to give him to him he gave the right to become the children of God. First of all, sinabi rito, children of God lang. Hindi tayo pwedeng hihinto na children of God sabihin mo born again ka na. Pag binasa mo, kayo na ang magbasa sa Galatians chapter 4, iba yung children, iba yung sons of God. The children of God will never be heirs in God's kingdom. The children of God will never be heirs in God's kingdom. You have to be you have to grow up to sons. We are going to go to that in future lessons. Okay, and then it says, to those who believe in His name. First, you can never believe in Him kung hindi ka nalipat sa light. Okay? Because you are in darkness. So how can you believe? Basahin mo in 1 John chapter 1, verse 1. Very clear. Ang witness, meaning, I'm just going to give a shortcut because I'm ending. Read it. R write it down. You read John chapter 1, verse 1. Sabi niya, Sa amen, who have seen him, who have heard him, who have touched him, meaning the Trinity, we have heard them, seen them, touched them, we have fellowship with them. So, let me ask you, 
Have you seen the Father? Have you seen Jesus? Have you seen the Holy Spirit? Have you touched them so that you can have fellowship with them? Unless you have done that, we cannot be witnesses for God. Okay? And then, sabi niya, uh, born, who were born not of blood. We cannot be born again if we still have the blood of the first Adam. Kaya nga, without death, there can be no resurrection. We have to be transferred to the blood of Christ. That's why we belong to the new covenant. When you eat that bread, you join Jesus in death. Join him in crucifixion. So Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. When we drink that wine, we are drinking that new blood. The new life that God is now, has now given us because we have died with Jesus. We are drinking the new blood that is our new life. And then it says, nor of the will of the flesh. Meaning, if I am still of the old man, in my will, I said, Lord, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. You know, I accept you into my heart. Very clearly, he says, in po pwede yung will ko that's belonging to the will of the first Adam. I have to die to the flesh to get a new intellect. When my old heart dies, my new soul is risen. I have a new intellect, new will, new emotions. I can only be born again with this new will. Do you understand? You know, I'm just doing a fast track thing, but you know, meditate on this. So, sabi niya, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man. But you can only be born again by the will of God. Meaning when we now have that new heart, that is the new will of God. That's why look at Jesus when he came. He gave the perfect example. He says, I don't speak unless I hear the Father speak. I don't do what I want. I don't do what I will. I only do what I see the Father's will. Yun ang born again. 